Yes, another response video. A thing I said I wouldn't do, but the response video siren song is too great. Plus, JMP is an academic, and I mean that in the insulting way, but I do think that makes him a fair target than some random YouTuber. See, in much of my time reading things put out by these ML-adjacent academics, I realized somehow a university must have made them stupider. See my debate on Twitter with the uh, one ML-PhD economist who somehow didn't know how crop yields worked. Um... Also, if you're expecting me not to be an asshole and throw insults around in this video, prepare to be disappointed. Also, for those uh, waiting for more serious history stuff from me, don't worry. I wrote this while I was being grumpy at work, so it actually didn't cut into any actual production time for, like, actual videos. Plus, this is just me recycling an old Twitter thread I did on his claims. Also, you don't want to watch me sh uh, show how some academic ML is lying about easy-to-verify stuff on Twitter. You just go watch one of my other videos for now. So in December of 2019, JMP claimed that the Second Congress of the Third International included a debate where Lenin's line won over the Trotskyist national chauvinist line. So we'll ignore the whole Trotskyism didn't exist thing. Also, you're probably wondering why I care about an old tweet. As I said before, I can recycle my old tweet thread into a video. Plus, JMP has been going on rants about Trotskyism more recently, and, well, I kind of just wanted to show him that he was a big old liar. So, unfortunately for JMP, I have books many books, in fact, and I have John Riddle's two volumes at the proceeding of the documents of the Second Con Congress, and books have these cool things called indexes, so it's incredibly easy me f for me to go verify his claims by just looking up Trotsky's name, because surely, if there was some sort of debate, uh, you know, Trotsky's name would have been mentioned a whole bunch of time in Lenin's speeches where he was arguing against the Trotskyist chauvinist line, um, but you'll see that's not the case, because Trotsky was in Poland for most of the Congress, and he never argued against the positions the Congress took on the national question during the brief time that he was there and not in Poland. Anyway, so in the index we have page 24, page 43, page 45, 74 through 75, 195 through 199, 539, 543, 555 through 556, 567, 549 through 861, 868 through... 901-911-61 through 963, and 1,171 through 1,172. Pages 24, 43, and 45 are purely an introduction written by John Riddle. Page 74 through 75 talks about how the official Soviet editions of this work were censored and edited in the 30s. Pages 195 through 199 is Trotsky arguing against syndicalists, because at this point they still existed outside of Kaiserreich. Page 539 is just a note about Trotsky demanding Polish representation to be admitted to the Brussels negotiations and his dislike for the German puppet government. 543, more writings about syndicalism. Page 555 through 556 is on editorial stuff. 567, it's just another note on how Trotsky's authorship of the introduction to the question of parliamentarianism was censored. 849 through 861, as a speech by Trotsky in the world situation. He never argues against the earlier positions of the Congress or Lenin on the national question. He talks about the Monroe Doctrine being the policy of exploitation in the U.S. being colonial. This was during the 15th session on August 7th. You can find this on Marxist.org. 868, Zinoviev mentions Trotsky. 901, just a list of delegates of which Trotsky is one. 911, Trotsky is listed at the committee dealing with parliamentarian stuff. 961 through 963, Trotsky attacks French socialists for chauvinism. Then, 1,171 through 1,172 is just a short biography of Trotsky. And that's it, because Trotsky was hardly at the Congress, and he certainly had no debate in the question on the national question while there. He was busy with the war with Poland. Now, in the lead-up to the Congress, there was some debates on the national question, and a bit during. See, other than Lenin, the other big figure on the national question at the Congress was not Trotsky, but M.N. Roy. For those unaware, Emin Roy was an Indian revolutionary. He started out as a nationalist. He'd eventually become a communist, and later in life, drift away sort of towards humanism, especially as the common turn came to hate him. He would come from. He would start out in India. He would come to live in the U.S. briefly, and eventually be forced to flee to Mexico, where he would help found the Mexican Communist Party. His work as being a revolutionary in India and Mexico would be noticed, and this got him invited to Moscow, where he would meet Lenin. 
He was given a draft thesis of Lenin's on the national and colonial question. In the corner was a note from Lenin, Comrade Roy, for criticisms and suggestions. He would later meet Lenin that same day, who was quite shocked at how young he was. Lenin, after learning Roy had not been given a chance to read the draft, scheduled more meetings, as Roy had firsthand experience in the conditions of Mexico and India, and Lenin confessed to be somewhat ignorant of the conditions in some of these countries. While Roy agreed with the bulk of Lenin's thesis, he was critical of the more positive treatment of the national bourgeoisie that Lenin gave. Lenin proposed that Roy write his own thesis on the matter so both could be considered. Roy agreed to this. The main difference was over if the national bourgeoisie had a revolutionary role to still play. Lenin thought that in some countries that it might still have a role to play, or Roy was of the opinion that it only had a reactionary role to play, as it would make deals with imperialism in return for concessions to their class, and that only the working class could carry out national liberation, but not necessarily as a socialist revolution. Lenin would concede to Roy's position in part and adjust the wording. So there was some debate at this Congress. Lenin saying Roy went maybe a bit too far and said, in Russia, we supported the liberal liberation movement during the attack on Tsarism. Communists of India must support the, the bourgeois democratic movement without merging with it. Comrade Roy went too far. Now Roy's position was now Roy's position was also attacked as going too far in concessions of the bourgeois revolutionary movements. As he argued, the masses, even if they're not fighting for communism, must be supported by an independent workers' movement. So Roy felt the work, the masses maybe should be supported in this matter, even if they're not fighting for a socialist revolution, but a liberal bourgeois revolution. Where Lenin felt in so far as they were playing a revolutionary role, the national bourgeoisie could be supported. However, if they weren't, they should be overthrown, but from an independent position. Serrati, the leader of the Socialist Party of Italy, supported by Sutan Zadi, a delegate from Iran, argued that an alliance with national revolutionaries would weaken the revolution and demoralize the class. Roy and Lenin also held that the proletariat and the advanced capitalist countries must support any national liberation movement, whether it goals be liberal, bourgeois, or socialist. Also in the 30s, Roy was accused of being in a clique with Trotsky, Zinoviev, Bukharin, and Radek, and that Roy, rather than having a discussion with Lenin, that he was refuted by Lenin, and that Lenin had actually authored a supplementary thesis. All bullshit, of course. This was attempt uh, by the Stalin-era common turn to attack Roy. So... Where does this leave JMP's claims? Well, you can see there was no fight with Trotsky. There was a debate at the Congress, but I think Trotsky is closer on this question to Roy rather than Lenin, but Lenin said Roy made good points and made concessions to him. So I don't think the gap there was particularly large at all. Certainly not some sort of vast national chauvinist line as JMP tries to claim. Um, I do have to mention, though, that Roy and Trotsky would disagree on the question in regards to China. But I think partially to Roy's position on China really was kind of in contradiction to his 1920s stance. Regardless of that, that point, JMP is full of shit and just made this up. Pretty much all sources from this video is from John Riddle's book with extra details from Carnick's 1978 biography of M.N. Roy. Anyway, that's it for this video. I promise that my next one will be like an actual history video and not me ranting about climate change or some sort of response video. I feel really kind of bad doing so many of these videos, but to be honest, they're kind of more fun. They get more views and they're kind of easier to do as I'm kind of working towards a very specific point. Anyway, my next video will probably be about the 1930s famine or the left SR Bolshevik coalition government. Coalition.